My goal is to tell you how yard birding can up your game by teaching and inspiring you. Photographing common birds in your backyard doesn't sound very exciting, but over the years I've found it integral and indispensable to my growth as a birder and photographer. It allowed me to do things and see things that I probably wouldn't in other scenarios. I've been fortunate enough to have a variety of species pass through my yard, but a local park can serve the same purpose. We're looking for consistency, a place you can go often to refine your way of seeing and making photographs. I won't tell you photographic rules to obey or what specific settings to use. That's going to be up to you because we all create differently. But I will share some insight along the way. It will make you more prepared so when that important moment strikes, you're better equipped to handle the situation and get the shots you want. Yard birding gives accessibility to various techniques you may want to try. Beyond style, you may want to just broaden your skill set. It's certainly good to know how to successfully capture different kinds of images so when you want to create them, you already have that knowledge. Achieving this is not only an engaging exercise, but can help open creative doors and new ways of seeing. Try not to only capture a more straightforward shot, but something that evokes feeling, something with character, a tender moment, or a savage one. The worst thing is seeing a perfect photograph opportunity that you miss because you're fumbling with your camera. The good news is that it happens to everyone. Sometimes birds are just too quick for us, but you can be better prepared. Learn the strengths and shortcomings of your gear. Figure out what settings work for you. And don't feel ashamed if you prefer shutter priority or even full auto. Those modes exist for a reason. If they help you get the results you're looking for, more power to you. Don't feel pressured by others just to use modes you're not comfortable with. It's only gonna leave you feeling more frustrated. But with that said, don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Your camera should feel like an extension of yourself. So you don't really think about taking the photograph. You don't really think about the settings. You just kind of react. You see a situation, you react. The more you watch birds, the more you can anticipate their actions. Pay attention to all the birds you see. Take a moment to see where they go and what they do. Of course, they can be completely unpredictable, but they're also creatures of habit. They'll often frequent the same perches or fly the same paths. You just have to pay attention. And you may notice other things like a perch bird will often relieve themselves before they take flight. A relaxed bird might be inclined to preen. Most species of birds, as different as they are, share these similarities. And these are things you can make mental notes of in anticipation of your shoot. Taking it further, get to know the specific birds you wish to photograph. Learn their quirks and their limits. Your target bird might often perch on a peach tree, guarding his feeder and territory, like the famous hummingbird in my yard. <laughs> He might only be seen at dawn and gone the entire day. He might be extremely skittish and fly off when you open the door. Each of these observations can help you with your next approach. And remember, it's the long game. Patience pays off. You'll get the shots you want, just with a little more time, effort, and education. As we all know, with wildlife photography especially, it's very easy to shoot thousands of photographs and forget about them. Especially with modern cameras shooting as fast as 30 frames per second, it's pretty insane. Most of us, we love to capture. That's what we live for. We love seeing the bird, getting him in frame, and pressing the shutter. That's where the magic happens. Post-production is often the grunt work we procrastinate. Sure, we love seeing the final images realized and remembering those moments, 
but we can certainly feel encumbered with all those images piling up. That's why we need a process. And like anything else, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Just gonna walk you through a little bit of my process and a little bit of my thinking, nothing prescriptive. You could do what you want, just showing you how I break down this crazy process. Maybe it'll give you some insight into how you can break down yours. If you want, the first thing to do, I would say, is to, if you don't have like a newer, faster computer, probably be easiest if you build one-to-one -one previews. That way you're not spending a million hours, you know, loading each image, because that's definitely something that is gonna deter you. So, you know, I just literally keep my fingers for the most part on a couple of a couple of these keys here because uh, hotkeys are the way to go so arrows obviously toggle through each and then i've got p and then i've got seven or eight so that's how it works so p is a pick so if the photo is nice and i like it and i might edit it then it gets a p if it's a definite stunner like oh wow that's excellent that's a seven seven is yellow so yellow is like super hot what's better than yellow Green, green is the next color. That's just how I do it. I don't ask me why, it's just the keys. That's the way it works. So yellow, super hot. Eight is like, oh my God, best of shoot, amazing, great. So that's how I do it. Sometimes I use different colors for other things. Sometimes I use stars, but for the most part, that's it. So we got P for pick, you might wanna edit it. Seven is a definite, gonna edit, and eight is, is a definite too. So let's see how that works. So. As you can see, I'm just toggling through these and most of these are gonna get an X. So X means I don't want it. You might delete a photo because it's not in focus or it's just gross or stupid or pointless. <laughs> However you decide, whatever the criteria, uh, though sometimes I keep photos that are bad because they're interesting. You know, it might not be winning any photography awards, but you know, I like the behavior or it was an interesting moment or whatever, whatever, or it's hilarious and I missed focus terribly and I like to look at it and laugh. What can I say? So there's that. Um, but otherwise it's just the X for delete, you know, for the most part. And sometimes I leave them unmarked and that's kind of a TBD. But for the most part, you want to X out the ones you want to throw in the trash because we want to optimize our space here. So yeah, this one's terrible. Like I'm not going to keep any of these. So I would just X, X, X going through X, X, X. So Again, I'm not going to really you know, do this. I'm not going to go through every single one. But you can see previously I had selected this one. So what was happening in this series, I saw this little, this little uh, fledgling. You know, the mom was feeding him. It was pretty fun. I kind of liked it. And then I was like, well, maybe I can get a more interesting view. So I kind of was poking around on the ground here. And so I got a nicer view. And so that's these next set of photos. So he was adorable on his little perch right there. So, you know, I was able to get that. So that's definitely a P and you, you know, again, I can edit some ones that are not marked in yellow too. It, whatever rules you want. It, it's, you know, cause I want to just see if it's going to work out. So obviously these I don't want because they are, you know, he's looking away from the camera. He's about to jump. He's about to jump, jump. So, you know, moving along in the shoot, I was, he was going up on the hill. So I had marked this one previously and kind of did a little editing. Sometimes I just do a quick edit. Like it's good to have also, again, this is not going to be super in depth, but it's good to have uh, some preset things that you do often. So for example, I have some masks here and I have some presets. Uh, they're called bird face one and bird face two. So they're a kind of combination of contrast and lightening and brightening of shadows, which I often do to birds, uh, you know, and maybe sometimes the bird has a color cast on him. Maybe he's a little too green here and we want to add a little magenta to, you know, even him out a little bit. Things like that uh, are good to do if you just want to quickly get a sense for a photo, but not, you know, spend all the time retouching it. That's another quick tip. Um, but yeah, don't, you don't have to go crazy. This is, this is what it is. So, I mean, I had pulled these out previously. That's kind of cute. You know, maybe crop right in here a little bit. This little hilarity with his little schnoz right there. Very adorable. But yeah, basically you can just see where this is going. You know, just click through, press P, click through, press P. 
it's very easy. See, I had, there you go. I'm talking, I'm talking in circles here. So, you know, obviously this was just a quick edit, like I was saying before, just to see if, you know, I had liked it. Obviously, see what happens. It's, ju it's just a, so I can get an idea of if I want to continue editing it, like if it's worth it, I guess. So, you know, maybe I'll X these out because they're not so great. But that's what it's all about, folks. Just get in your shortcuts. You don't have to know 50 different things. Just get like two or three. You know, I got the, I got the pick. I got the, you know, the X out or the U. If you didn't made a mistake, it's unpick. Uh, and then the two colors. That's it. That's all I got to do. And then when you're done, you know, you sort by whatever filter narrows down. If you're like, oh, well, let's see, you know, which are the super dope ones that I want to edit right now. And here's one. So there you go. Boom. You got your photo. But now that I'm looking at this, this was 10,000 ISO. Little higher than I want. It's not too bad because the R3 is great, but might want to clean it up a little bit. And this is where I do Topaz. So let's pull that up real quick. But I'll show you how I use it. Okay, so this is what I do, folks. So I had done a preliminary edit, like I was saying before, and I just create a virtual copy. So I might want those edits that I did. So the edits are there in the virtual copy. And now what I do is I take the edits away. So where is that right now? There we go, <laughs> reset. I don't know, I'll put it on the spot, I can't think. Okay, so like I said, it's a little bit more noisy than perhaps I want. Maybe we can clean that up a little bit. Denoise right here. Uh, it's fine. It can either, if, it, if I don't do edits, you know, you can say edit original or edit a copy. There's, there's no adjustment, so it's fine. So let's pull this up. Now I'm going to say this. The AI has gotten so good on this. Look at that. It automatically selected what it thinks. Okay low light and again it's not a ton but it's just enough to say ah it's like it's like a little bit of a relief now again I'm, I'm I don't mind noise too often you know it's it makes things look real but sometimes like I said when you crop in especially you kind of want it to be a little bit cleaner so as you can see look at that it's like stunning I mean especially in all of this beautiful background detail it's just, look at it. It's, it. it's so much more delicious. That's pretty much it. So, I mean, you can adjust this as, you know, as per image. Obviously, sometimes you need to remove a little more noise, but I would say this, this is a rule. So to make your photos feel and look natural, like you didn't do anything to them, use with a soft hand. Don't just blast it up and do, you know, remove all of the noise because it's going to look kind of strange but if you do it moderately and again their ai has been very good i've used their uh, auto settings as a base and then i work from there it's been excellent like look i still you know it retained all of the detail in the tree and his back feathers and his eye i mean i can't expect it to do more than that little hairs underneath this was, again, 10,000 ISO, so it's pretty, pretty up there. So it looks, it looks pretty excellent. So I'm just going to go right ahead and say apply right there. And so then what will happen is it'll process, takes a long time or short time, depending on your computer situation. So now it pulled in. You can see up here it says TIFF right there. So this is the file. So what I do a lot, like I said, I did those preliminary edits. So I'll just sync those, including the masking, whatever I do, synchronize that. And then I have a base for the edits. So it looks a little yellowy, greeny, so I can continue, you know, adjusting from there because it was a little bit cooler. It was, and I'll just continue, you know, editing and refining this. Boom, done. Another quick tip, again, I'm not going into detail, make a preset for wherever you're exporting. So for example, Instagram is where I post all my photos. You know that, we all know that I'm an Instagram crazy person. I have a preset for Instagram and that exports to a specific folder on Dropbox. So I can access that folder from 
anywhere. I can access it from my phone. If I export it, I forgot to download it, I wanna post, boom, I can get it. So again, those quick tips. I can make a more in-depth video if people care about the minutia of all the stuff I do. But this is just a high level, just to show you that. Yeah, you can break it down. It's annoying and tedious process, but you know, it's definitely manageable. So what is the perfect photography for you? What images do you see and would love to make? Do you like environmental shots, isolated portraits? Do you prefer moody, darker tones or high key light and airy ones? Vivid, muted, background blurs, foreground blurs? Perhaps you wanna try panning shots or artistic motion blurs. All of these things can be experimented more easily when the birds are a bit more cooperative in the yard. You can shoot to your heart's content and try to make the images you're really passionate about. And once you find what suits your style, you can apply this to anything you shoot. Your approach is now a bit more ingrained and you can envision the image much more easily now. Sometimes we struggle whether it's in the field or at the desk. Practice your active approach when encountering birds in the yard. See how slowly or quickly you need to move or how to walk at an off angle, not directly looking at the bird or not to walk at all and keep your distance or sometimes sitting at the computer is for more than just color correcting. It's also for learning. For example, you take a good photo, but it's not quite in focus. So let's troubleshoot. First, you take a look at the metadata and see what the culprit might be. Oh yeah, the shutter speed was a bit too slow. That's why it's not in focus. Wait, the shutter speed was fast? Then maybe you didn't hit focus. Or what else could have happened? The more you shoot, the more you'll gain experience and put that knowledge into practice. You've shot every bird you always wanted to see and captured every image you ever dreamed of. That means you're done, right? Not necessarily. You can always learn more. You can always do something that hasn't been done. Create a new project for yourself. Just don't feel that once you photographed a particular species, your quest is over. There's a lot more for you to unlock in the art of photography and so many more images you have yet to create. Don't feel frustrated. Enjoy the mundane. Make it useful. Make it unique. Be patient with yourself and you'll certainly achieve what you set out to do. And you'll never even have to leave the yard.